My Tiger 1200 was coming up for its fifth birthday and the bike has now left me. Time to buy a new bike. The world is my oyster. There's never been a better time to buy a motorcycle. The choice is massive. Or is it? First things first. Hello, love. Yeah, I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about you all night. In fact, I got up this morning and I thought, it's our anniversary. Happy anniversary, love. Uh, you don't mind if I spend 25 grand on a bike, do you? I got you a card for our anniversary. I did think about you. I did think about you. So great, I can spend 25 grand, can I? Yeah, great, thank you. You got, you got me a card? I oh, love. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. Great. Uh, I'm off down the bike shop now. Cheers. Once you decide what you want for the bike and set some criteria and some wants, it's amazing how fast the choice gets whittled down. First off, here's my main driving criteria. I'm 117 kilos and I still have a requirement to take a pillion every now and then. So I need a bike with a decent carrying capability. Secondly, I'm quite short in the leg. I've only got a 29 inch, maybe 29 and a half inch leg. So I need a bike that will comfortably accommodate my leg size. Okay, so there are the two main drivers in the bike selection. Uh, what are my other parameters or considerations? Either driven by my main criteria, my leg size and my weight and the fact I need a pillion uh, or, or cap pillion capability, or just what else are my personal preferences? Well, I'll run through a few of them. Okay, given that leg size, I need to look for a bike with a seat height of around 810 to 840 millimetres. And given my weight and that I need to take a pillion and uh, luggage, I need a bike with a decent payload. So I've set myself a target of a carrying capacity of at least 210 kilos or better. Again, because of that pillion requirement, I want at least 120 horsepower. I had a 2016 Africa Twin, the one with the 1,000cc engine, and it was really anemic uh, two up. By the time we added luggage and everything like that, I didn't think it fared well at all. Given that I'm only going to use this bike on the road, I'll also avoid 21-inch front wheels. Uh, but I, that, that shouldn't limit me in my selection. I don't want a chain or shaft drive. I'm really not bothered either way. I'm looking for something with at least 150 mil suspension and it has to be adjustable. Manually adjustable is fine. I am looking for a lighter bike. My current Tiger 1200 is about 275 kilos wet. So I'm looking to lose weight. Uh, so Luxo Bargias, Big Harleys, GTL 1600s and Gold Wings, they're out. The bike doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles. It doesn't have to have a six axis IMU. It doesn't have to have full electronic suspension. I'm very happy adjusting all that stuff myself. Given all that criteria then, I'm obviously looking for a large capacity sport tourer or adventure bike. Let's see what's out there. So in no particular order, I'll start off with the Suzuki V-Strom 1050. There's a new one for 2023 with slightly different variations and off-road tyres and spoke wheels and stuff like that. Uh, but it probably lets me down. It's load, load capacity is a bit low at 205 kilos. It's probably a bit tall for me at 880 mil um, for the spoke wheel version. And it's lacking in power for two up riding, 107 horsepower. Now, I'm sure it has a fair bit of grunt and stuff like that. And I actually quite respect this bike for kind of being what it is. And it has a great loyal, fa uh, loyal um, fan following. Uh, but not quite for me. What's next? The uh, Honda Africa Twin, the 1100. Uh, I had an Africa Twin, the 1000cc version. And I thought the engine was a bit lacking for a two-up wheel pillion. I know this engine's a bit more tractable and there's an extra 100 cc's on it now. And it's a bit more powerful. Uh, but it's still, it's not enough for 101 horsepower. It's not enough for me. Its load capacity is not that great. It's not bad, but not that great. It's uh, 204 to 206 kilos, something like that. Um, it used to be an awful lot less than the 1,000 cc model. So that's a great improvement there. And it's actually just too tall for me. So Africa Twin, that's out. Who's next? Uh, Tiger 900 Rally. I only put this in uh, as an example. I wouldn't go for this because it's only 94 horsepower. I would want more power for a pillion. But I just wanted to highlight it's amazing 222 kilos low capacity. That's huge for a 900cc bike. Uh, there's not many people who do that. And uh, in this instance, I'd also make an exception for that 21 inch front wheel because of the chassis geometry on that and the way they um, pitch the front of that bike up for going off road. It has a off road, sorry, it has a road bias geometry on this chassis and it suits that 21 inch front wheel. It's fantastic on the road, this bike, uh, but um, yeah, just not enough power. 
It is tall, it is tall, but there's a massive uh, seat to peg uh, height ratio on this bike. So you can put the seat in the low position and still have a nice bend in your knee and your hip and everything like that. Plus, although it is big travel suspension, uh, by the time you get laden, uh, uh, a bit of sag on that uh, with, with my weight and everything like that, that actually brings that bike down quite a lot. So that would be another contention for me uh, when I'm only doing solo stuff. But for two up work, 94 horsepower, just not enough. The Honda NT1100, a bike that's got an awful lot going for it. Um, unbelievable value and a unique DCT option. Really comfortable ergos. I sat on this at one of the shows. 820 mil seat height, perfect. But I do feel it's a bit underpowered for a pillion and not having adjustable uh, damping on the suspension, I think it's a poor show on a bike designed for kind of touring. But look, it is what it is. Um, really, it's not enough power for two up work for me. So that's out of the question. Next up, Suzuki GSX S1000 GT. Great seat height, 810 mil. I'd possibly make an exception to my 150 mil rule on suspension travel, uh, just because it is uh, damping adjusted, adjustable at the front and the rear. Though the pillion seat leaves a lot to be desired. There's a lot of promo shots with the pillion in this, but I bet, bet they're not doing an eight hour day on it. <laughs> this bike really appeals to me. Another Suzuki that really, really appeals to me for its kind of basic no nonsense bike. I don't care that it doesn't have a six axis IMU. I cannot find out the max load capacity this bike and I got in a chat with Suzuki GB uh, but once they sussed out I was based in Ireland uh, they said they couldn't help me anymore and ended the chat <laughs> so that was that but I probably wouldn't buy it just because it's got too many characters in his name <laughs> In the same vein as the Suzuki, I considered the Kawasaki Z1000SX. Fantastic bike, really, really great reputation, uh, a great price, uh, not a bad seat height, 835 mil. I could definitely live with, uh, live with that. I couldn't find the suspension travel, but I'm going to guess it's somewhere around about the same as the Suzuki, about 120 mil. Nice ergonomics. Again, I sat on this at the show, really liked it. The pillion seat leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, I, ca I can't imagine a six or eight hour day for the pillion on this, but the max load capacity is a bit low, 195 kilo. So that's kind of ruled out on pillion comfort and carrying capacity, really. Next up, the Kawasaki Versus, uh, same engine as the Z1000, just tuned differently. A lot going for it uh, and a lot of budget choices on this bike. I like the fact that you can get the base model with manually adjustable suspension. I'd definitely go for that. I have no problem with that. Uh, the weight is a bit up there, 255 kilos, but I could probably live with that. But it's holding that weight up high and that's exactly what I'm trying to get away from. Pillion seat looks really friendly though. 150 mil suspension travel on 17 inch wheels. I like the idea of that. That's great. Seat height's not massively tall at 840 mil. But its low capacity is a little bit lacking for me, uh, 197 kilo. But yeah, ruling this one out on uh, carrying its weight high. I don't want another bike that's kind of feeling a bit pendulum-y at the top. KTM Super Adventure S, very desirable, unique look and pedigree. I was having a look around these in the showroom. They really uh, pop these bikes. I like, like the look of these a lot. Seat height's too tall for me though, 850 to 870. There are lots and lots of lower seats available, but again, all at the expense of comfort, you know, you're shortening that seat to peg ratio. Uh, this could have been a main contender for me had there been a low chassis version. I also thought they were well priced and they have, uh, you can extend the warranty to 12 years or 80,000 kilometers, which I think uh, I've never seen that sort of stuff anywhere else. I think that's quite unique in industry. I think that's absolutely fantastic. Right, <laughs> Super Duke GT. The weight's great, uh, seat height's great. Um, did you ever see a YouTube video with a pillion on one of these bikes? Ever, 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 ever? Was it this out on the website? Think of the KTM 1290 Super Duke GT as a comfortable ballistic missile. Oh, yeah, I'll just tell that to my missus and we'll go off to Spain and we'll, she, she'll be really relaxed. <laughs> Not a hope. Bit of a dark horse, this one, a BMW S1000 XR. There's a low chassis version available. That's impressive. It does have an impressive load capacity, 224 kilos. That's more than a GS or a GS Adventure. It has more than enough power, 160 plus, I think, something like that. Uh, but to me, uh, it is a bit of a sporty bike. It's a bit focused on sporty, and that's not what I'm looking for. And it's also another four-cylinder bike. I have two four-cylinder bikes already, and I don't really want another. <laughs> but impressive, low capacity, unbelievable. Almost perfect, Ducati Multistrada V4. Stunning good looks. 
I love the oil service interval, that's fantastic. Valve service 60,000 kilometres, brilliant. Seat height of 840 to 860, but there's a 20 mil lowering kit available, uh, fork and shock springs and side stand. I love that fact. Excellent load capacity, 225 kilos. And you can buy the entry level V4 and add cruise and quick shifter and hill hold. And that surely would make a perfect tour up bike. That sounds brilliant. But there's a big but, a big but. This thing guzzles petrol. If you listen to road testers and owners, mid to low 30s seems to be very common. Uh, you're, one sh- you're one shares in an oil field. And I know you could say, you've just blown 20 grand. Well, I haven't yet, but you've just blown 20 grand on a, a, you know, a, a big 1200cc sort of bike. What were you expecting the fuel consumption to be? I know, I know, I know. But it's really excessive on this bike. It drinks fuel compared to the others. And uh, I'm just too much of a tightwad. <laughs> Up next, the Harley Pan America. I really enjoyed. This is a bike I actually did test drive and it has the brilliant adaptive ride height technology. So when it comes up to a junction, the uh, rear preload drops off and you can get flat foot both your feet if, you, if you're short on the leg, uh, like me. Uh, but on top of that, it's got a thoroughly entertaining engine and chassis uh, and brakes, and I, I loved it. I loved the riding modes, I loved the suspension, the engine. There was nothing to dislike about this bike. It was really comfortable, a great seat, great ergos, and I reckon this would be a comfortable bike too up. Valve service, never magic uh, there's a bit of a weird 5k uh, miles service interval considering it's got a four and a half litre sump and there's a requirement to change the spark plugs every 10,000 miles um, if that was me I'd be tempted to tell the dealer don't do that because um, you're going to have to take the tank and a load of crap off to get to those spark plugs because there's another two underneath the fuel tank and uh, look no, th- there's not a spark plug on the planet that won't last 20,000 miles you're just going to be stuck for a stupid amount of labour to do that but uh anything else about this bike i loved it it's one failing for me it's one failing it doesn't have a bad load capacity but at 201 kilos it's just it's just not enough that 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 i want to go down to but i love this bike as the owner of a 2018 model year tiger of course i had to test drive the new tiger 1200 gt uh great power yeah it just blitz anything to up work be fine it has a fantastic payload 222 kilos great it's been on a massive diet, uh, unlike me. <laughs> it's, it's been a massive weight loss uh, compared to my current bike. It's probably, I've probably lost 25, 30 kilos. Um, I did test ride this bike. It's absolutely brilliant. Uh, the center of gravity of that weight is much lower. Uh, everything else is, is superb about it. Uh, the suspension is fantastic. I like the idea that you can buy the base model and I can just add cruise and a quick shifter. That'll be fantastic. It has one failing for me though its seat height it's just a tiny bit too tall for me uh, it, it's not by much it's not by much but it is a bit too tall for me and it aggravated my inner thighs again i didn't want to lower the seat and compromise my kind of uh, seat to peg ratio so it's with a heavy heart that i actually can't buy this bike because it's just too uncomfortable for me particularly for me just just my just my size it doesn't look like there's going to be a low chassis version and i'm not surprised they did one in the last model and i reckon they sold them in very small numbers and from an engineering perspective and a customer's perspective there probably isn't enough demand out there for that low chassis version so that's it uh, it's a bit of a shame but that's that one's out for me too so where does that leave me there's only one other bike choice i can think of bmw gs uh, the GSA is out of the question. That doesn't meet my weight criteria. But if I look at the uh, R1250 GS, 249 kilos, and it carries its weight lower. They do a lower chassis version, and it has a loading capacity. Not as good as the Triumphs, but still a decent 216 kilos. If I go the low chassis model, I can get a seat height between 800 and 820 mil. And, you know, if I got a high, taller seat, I could push that up to 840. So there's a lot of variations. There's a lot of mucking around I could do with that bike. But at the moment, it's the only bike that's met all three criteria. Now, you're going to pay for that lowered seat height, obviously, the same way you would with the uh, Ducati, in that you're giving up suspension travel. So that front's going to go from 190 mil to 158 mil. And the rear is going to go from 200 mil to 170 mil. But because I'm never going to go off-road on this bike and it's always going to be a road bike, that's not going to be of too much consequence. It's not going to affect my road riding too much. 
So that's it. I started off with the world is my oyster, but it obviously wasn't. And I have to buy a BMW R1250 GS when it's just about to be replaced with an R1300 GS. <laughs> that might take another year, who knows. The 1250 GS is here and now, and it's something I can buy here and now. So I went and put my deposit down, and I'll get it in the new year. I think you fucking lost it. What? Why would you do that? <laughs>